Hey YouTube, what is up? So, first of all, I'd like to apologize for a few video mishaps I have done. First of all, my original review for this thing was actually quite well done. My only complaint with it was it had Bon Jovi music in it. And it got deleted a few weeks ago. Now, the review I did for this like a week ago was actually quite well done but it had a lot of misinformation in it didn't really talk too much about the upgrades I did to it which is why I'm hoping this video will be much better than the previous video about this printer and I might actually end up deleting a lot of the information I posted on this printer on YouTube because, well, it just didn't come out very well. Sorry, I'm just moving around trying to get comfortable. This is not a very comfortable position. So let me begin. First of all, in the previous video I said about this, Filament for this printer costed about $50. Well, I ended up Googling it after a friend told me it costed about $25 to about $40 for a spool of filament for this thing, which actually turned out to be quite true. And I'd like to just say, I think I misunderstood how much the filament cost because I remember hearing about it a while ago and I think I just misunderstood it. Now the 3D printer has filament that is RFID tagged so that the only way you can use filament for this printer is either if you replace the motherboard with something completely off-brand or if you simply just hack the RFID in it or update the software to it and make it so it doesn't accept filament with an RFID tag. But honestly, I really like what I did to it. I just completely replaced the motherboard, put it up here instead of down here below. And it actually does a pretty nice job. The reason I say that is because the filament, I mean, not the filament, the, the software to use this printer is proprietary. And the software that comes with this printer, it's not very nice. It's very limited. It does terrible prints compared to what Cura does. I mean, actually, this software is really a downgrade from Cura. It's actually based loosely off of a very old version of Cura, which is very disappointing. The fact they would copyright something that doesn't have a copyright, <laughs> but yeah. And some of the upgrades I have done is most recently add a cooling fan to the print, add a PI sheet for, for adherence to the build plate. The prints can stick to the build plate much easier. And a Ramps 1.4 motherboard on the top with an LCD display, which wasn't, which the original printer did not have an LCD display. And I also added new end stops to it, which I 3D printed mounts for them which I'm very sorry, I didn't honestly post the files on Thingiverse, even though I probably should have. Those were really well done files. I might recreate it sometime in the near future, but not right now. I have a lot on my plate. And I think that's honestly it, besides the new stepper motor I added onto it. But that was only, the only reason I added a new stepper motor onto the Z-axis was because the old one was toast. 
So, anyways, this 3D printer, my honest opinions of it, it is completely evil. It sucks the way it was brand new. It performs horribly with the proprietary software that was on it. It worked horribly with the filament because the filament was terrible. That, that's proprietary. You'd think something proprietary would be actually decent since it's so expensive, but it isn't. It's actually quite the opposite. They can charge whatever they want for materials for this thing because you'll be stuck with this thing for a long time unless you hack it. And another complaint I had with it was the small build plate. It can only print things within a cubic six inches, which I'm actually quite okay with. Considering I don't do prints bigger than six inches, but I know a lot of people do do that. So that's a big issue with this thing. It comes with auto leveling, which is right here. I actually had to, this 3D printer had a ribbon cable attached to the hot end and the auto leveler and the fan and stuff. I actually removed that and directly soldered wires connecting it to this. I basically moved all the wires from here to here on the sprinter. And the big plus to this printer, it's actually a very mechanical, sturdy, pretty printer. It's very mechanically sound. I mean, after the upgrade, that's questionable, but it's a very, very me mechanical wise, very well done printer mechanical wise and electrical wise as well before the upgrades. But that's really it. Thank you for watching and bye.